So, what is the meaning of species first of all? So, I will just write the definition of species now. Species is a group of population, it is a group of population which can interbreed. Now, a group of population which can interbreed that means they can reproduce and they can produce their offsprings. So, this is the meaning of species. Now, IUCN International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources just now we discussed that uh, IUCN has developed a red data book in which the uh, names of the threatened species are listed. So, uh, IUCN has actually divided the species into certain categories. The one which is uh, which needs immediate care, the one which needs to be taken care of, but still has got a little time, the one which is you know uh, possible uh, uh, to survive, which if uh, good care is taken within a year or two. In this way certain divisions are done by IUCN. So, first of all I will talk about IUCN, what is the full form of IUCN? It is International Union International Union of nature and natural resources. International Union of Nature and Natural Resources. Now, IUCN has divided the species into certain categories. Now, what all are these categories children? It is into actually three categories IUCN has divided three categories. Now, the first one is endangered species, the first one is endangered species. Now, the second one is vulnerable species, vulnerable species and the third one is rare species, third one is a rare species. Now, actually you know there are many other divisions also if we this I am talking about the major division engendered uh, endangered species, vulnerable species and rare species or is you know a greater uh, division is also uh, there you know the extinct and uh, un, uh, you know the least uh, concern or the data is not available, not studied much like many uh, are there many divisions are there, but we need to study these three, we need to understand these three. Actually, you know, all these three comes under one which is known as threatened. Threatened species. So, the threatened species I can say that threatened species is divided into three the endangered, the vulnerable, and the rare species. Now, one point again I would like to tell over here that in different books, the division is given in different different ways. So, it is not about right and wrong, it is about you know the uh, some may think that these things or these uh, these division are important and need to be studied. So, what I thought is important is the threatened species which includes the endangered species, vulnerable species and the rare species. Now, 
when we discuss the first one please come to the first one endangered species now this endangered species are the you know is a species in which the animals are kept which kind of animals are kept which need immediate help immediate help is required the number has reduced uh, to a great extent extent and if certain important and useful measures and steps are not taken if this will continue for few more months the or years these species will be uh, will come in the category of extinct species so these species are the one which are really threatened species the one which really needs more help so endangered species uh, is the one where the number of a particular species is reduced it is on verge of extinction it is on verge of extinction that means immediate help is required immediate steps are required and if steps are not taken then if steps are not taken then this species will or the animals uh, uh, belong into this category will become extinct so if steps are not taken then the species can become extinct that means if the care is not taken the particular species is going to become an extinct species and then we will be helpless we won't be able to do anything so great care steps immediate steps are required for the endangered species this i am writing about the and the endangered species now what are the examples of endangered species or what or which animals comes under these uh, not these this which animals come under this category so indian rhino then asiatic lion and even great indian bustard great indian bustard is a bird great indian bustard now this are uh, i have taken only three examples so these three are the examples which needs immediate care which needs immediate steps and measures so that they may come out of this danger of getting extinct so this is the meaning of the endangered species now we will talk about the second one which is vulnerable species which is known as what vulnerable species it is second now these species uh if we talk about i'll write the example first now examples are musk deer samba and even the spotted deer now these are the animals which you know ha are the number are uh, the number is more than the endangered species these species is not as much 
as uh, you know the, these species this one or this category when we talk about vulnerable species in this category those species the species which are kept are not uh, the one which will extinct immediately but if the causes are not okay uh, what can be the reasons of the you know uh, the species in uh, why the species have come into endangered or vulnerable or rare species why the why this is why this has happened uh, why the one specially has come in the endangered once the number was uh, like very high and now the number has reduced so what can be the major reason cause of reduction in the numbers it can be children hunting the reason can be what it can be hunting the reason it can be hunting or can be habitat also can be hunting or habitat loss in habitat loss of habitat and this is same with all the species why the species will get extinct because the baby due to the hunting when it when we talk about the plants then it is not about hunting that becomes overuse overuse and when we talk about habitat that means the suitable climatic conditions are not available isn't it so maybe hunting maybe loss of habitat maybe due to the climatic conditions maybe the climatic conditions so these can be the reasons for the loss of uh, numbers why the number is getting reduced why the individuals from more ones and why the numbers are decreasing so now this was about the endangered species now when we talk about the vulnerable species now here the numbers are not very less it is not the thing uh, that uh, they are not in the what i mean to say is see endangered species need immediate help they are just on the door of extinction if the care is not taken immediately they'll come in the category of extinct but vulnerable can come in the category of endangered species if care is not taken isn't it so if care is not taken if steps are not taken if steps are not taken the vulnerable species the vulnerable species can come under the endangered species Who would have written over here? So, if care steps are not taken under the endangered endangered species. that means the individuals numbers are there they are not in uh, great danger but still require require steps to be taken require measures to be taken requires help so that the vulnerable species should not actually go in endangered one or is again these endangered already they are uh, in uh, we have got lot of danger about endangered species they may become extinct and if vulnerable will join endangered species then again there will be a great threat that even these species will come to an uh, extinction so what are the vulnerable species and what is the uh, endangered species now endangered is the one which needs immediate care but vulnerable species is the one which if care is not taken these species will come in the endangered one okay now we'll talk about the third one which is rare species the 
Now, what is the meaning of rare species? Now, rare species means these uh, the animals belonging to this uh, species are not found everywhere. They are not found everywhere in the world. They are uh, found in limited uh, geographical area. They are found in limited geographical area. That means they have got scattered population. Have got have got scattered population. Have got scattered population. That means the number, if we calculate the total number present in the world, the number is less. If total population is calculated, total population globally is calculated, it is very less. Okay. So, rare species means what the species uh, those species which are not present everywhere not found everywhere they are found in certain fixed kind of geographical uh, areas only because they need certain special kind of climatic condition and that is the reason they are not found everywhere and confined to a limited area. Now, uh, if we talk about the examples of a rare species, so uh, you know there are many uh, species which comes under the category of rare species or the one which is uh, you know found only in certain limited area and if when we calculate the total number globally then it comes to very less. So, the examples can be Indian elephant. Now, we all know that the number of the elephants are decreasing uh, day by day. Uh, once upon a time like very often we used to see elephants uh, in the cities also. Now, it is also banned actually the people cannot uh, keep them, but still it is going on that people keep the elephants and also uh, you know uh, uh, the they collect money on behalf of elephants just they sit on them and they move nicely and the people uh, come out and you know they give money even the elephants are used for carrying uh, loads you know uh, so this is done now also but basically the number of elephant is decreased now even the wild buffaloes and Asiatic S. So, these species are decreasing uh, actually these are already the one which are which is rare these are not present everywhere they are present in certain areas only. Now, if the care is not taken these rare can come into vulnerable and if the, the care for the vulnerable is not taken then vulnerable can come and endangered species and endangered are what the one which is uh, on the edge of extinction only ok. So, now we will talk about uh, one more species now this these are the three which is divided by the IUCN. Now, I will talk about the definition of endemic species now what is the meaning of endemic species. Now, the endemic species are one which are only confined to a particular area only. They are not present anywhere else. They are not present anywhere else. Endemic species is the one which the animals are confined to a specific geographical area now you know 
there are there are many uh, species which are endemic to india so please try to understand the difference between this first of all iucn has divided this species into certain categories the uh, threatened species has got the species which are endangered the one which is really uh, on the verge of extinction vulnerable which if care is not taken will come in endangered rare the main difference has to be understood about rare and endemic rare means the one which is present all over the world but in certain limited area okay and this is a division done by iucn now endemic is the other part i'm just discussing because we are talking about the species now and now as we have discussed that india is a mega diversity zone that means india give a diverse habitat and that is a reason many species are endemic to india india has got many species which are endemic that means present only in india they are not found anywhere else you know uh, so uh, what is the meaning of endemic present in only particular area not found anywhere else so now we'll talk about the endemic species few endemic species uh, first of all few areas we'll talk about that why uh, such more of species are present in india and where actually where it is present why it is present we all know because india has got diverse habitat has got lot of different different kinds of um, areas we have desert also we have got snow also we have obviously the uh, water bodies are also there we have got good forest area also and different kind of forest we have got so now uh, where these species are found like north east india western ghats then north west i am not able to write also now so north west himalaya even in andaman and nicobar islands now there is no place so i won't be writing anything else now now which animals are endemic so i'll write two three over here because we don't have place so lion tailed macaw lion tailed macaw okay now the second is nilgiri langur so third one also i can write over here great indian bustard great indian bustard so these species are only found in india now you know endemic species uh, we are very lucky that we have got so many endemic species many are there i don't have place to write over there but you know sometimes what happens like when the endemic species is taken by someone else in other country and introduced there then it becomes very difficult sometimes or many a times you know what happen that suppose a place is there hmm? and if the one species is brought from the other country and introduced in that country and what happens that species uh, becomes a threat for the native species to survive are you getting my point that endemic species are the species which are found only in certain areas so we were discussing about all these species and uh, iucn has divided these species into certain categories on the basis of their availability on the surface of the earth or on the basis of the number of their or the individuals so there are certain species which need immediate care are uh, really about to extinct and if the care is not taken then vulnerable will go in endangered rare is one which is found all over the world world but only in certain fixed areas they are not present everywhere they are not present everywhere 
geographically they are present in very limited areas and overall if population is calculated they are very less endemic is other thing this three are the division done by iucn endemic means the one which is belongs to only that particular area now even the peacock is an endemic species for uh, india so uh, even the exotic that means uh, when the species uh, belonging to one particular area is taken to the other part say for example deer musk deer is taken to andaman nicobar basically it was not there so it become an exotic species and as there is no predator no one who will kill the natural predator who will kill the uh, deer over there in andaman nicobar so what they are doing what deers are doing they are competing um, because the number has increased like anything so they are not only destroying the forest but they are also destroying the crops and the uh, they are you know uh, struggling among themselves for they are competing among themselves for space for breeding and in all these things so a species you know when the natural predator is not there then again uh, some other reason uh, develops and the existence uh, comes in uh, danger and there are many examples where these species are taken from one place to another and uh, sometimes the native species comes in danger so this is all about the uh, species that what is a uh, species a species is a group of the population which can interbreed and can reproduce and then the division made by the iucn now we will talk about uh, certain more points and uh, please note these points now we are on the last part of the topic and uh, this i will start with the question that when so many things we know we know that wildlife has to be conserved we know that the animals and many plants and animals have come under the category of endangered animals or species list then why don't we do so why don't we care why don't we take any steps so uh, even the indian government takes lot of care for that as we have discussed that the project tiger is one of the biggest example of the success of the government of india or but still there are many things which still which are going on illegal hunting is going on and that too on the you know the uh, speed of killing of animals is so high so great that any species can come under the category of extinct or endangered species actually the government has made many laws but the need is to follow the laws with you know real zeal needs to uh, need to become very strict when it comes with the wildlife and the forest so just we'll have a look that what are the different laws which uh, indian government is working on what are the different rules uh, for the safeguard of the wildlife so i won't go in detail but just will discuss two or three so first of all the first is forest preservation act now this forest preservation act it gives the freedom to government or the power to government to stop all kind of illegal use of forest land it gives the power to the government to stop the people who are interfering in the forest area maybe for simple reason like grazing you know maybe the grazing or the cultivation so all these things can be prohibited and again you know it depends upon the area it depends upon the kind of forest or the century or the park where the people are trying to enter because we have seen in the century little uh, little area is given is you know where the permission is given to a particular firms to take uh, out the wood from there 
when we talk about the reserve the uh, biosphere reserve area we know there the good care of tribals are also taken that means the tribals are allowed they are the part of the forest now we also know that in national park uh, all these things are prohibited so it depends where the particular person or the firm wants to interfere but due to this forest preservation act, act, <laughs> act the grazing mining the illegal use of forest area can be stopped illegal use of forest land can be stopped so illegal use of forest land can be stopped government gets a power for that now if we talk about the second one it is wildlife protection act now as the name itself suggests this act totally gives the government the power to you know save wildlife now wildlife is in in danger i told you because of the two reasons the habitat and the hunting there are many several reason the global warming is there pollution is there climate is there but the main is the hunting and the uh, the habitat so habitat just now i wrote that forest preservation act that means the habitat can be safe you know the one can stop the government has got the power to stop uh, the person or the you know particular uh, firm or anyone to stop using the forest land illegally can stop uh, from uh, mining can stop for cutting from cutting of the trees can stop from cultivation in forest land can stop from grazing now this wildlife protection act is you know uh, it uh, gives the power to take action against the hunting hunting can be checked or prohibited checked or prohibited now we know that uh, you know like when we talk about certain animals the fishes are uh, like uh, what the fishermen will be doing they'll be catching the fishes we all know but again there are certain species which are totally banned cannot be used cannot be taken off even by the fishermen so in the same way this wildlife protection act protect act or protection act it should be wildlife protect act protection so this wildlife protection act helps the government or gives the power to the government to act against the one who kills the uh, you know animals now the third one third is environment protection act now this rule or this law uh, helps the uh, government to stop any industry to get settled or to be you know uh, near the forest area so the industries the development or even i can say the establishment development or establishment development or establishment of any industry can be prohibited so with the help of this rule the government has got the power to stop the industry to be to get established near the forest area because it is not at all allowed so there are many other rules also many other regulations and uh, legal laws you know which helps the government to take action against any 
uh, illegal actions, illegal things going on in the forest or uh, you know any kind of uh, misuse of wildlife. So I will just discuss the three the forest preservation act which helps the government to take action against the one who is uh, you know using the forest land illegally maybe for the mining or grazing or the cultivation. Second wildlife it is against the hunting mainly I can say and the third one is environment that means for the protection of the environment. Now with this, this chapter is over and now we will be discussing about the NCERT questions and then definitely we will be moving to certain extra questions so that the concepts can become more clearer. So that is all in this chapter and now we will talk about NCERT question answers. Thank you.